Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilikoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, how do omega-3s help brain recovery following a concussion? And this is something that I've talked about uh, multiple times in the past um, on nutrition for a concussion. There are many things that we can take to improve nutrition or to improve brain recovery. Uh, that's a nutritional basis. Uh, to improve recovery after a concussion. But I really wanna focus on omega-3s because one, it has the most research, and two, it has the most ability to hit all the pathways that are damaged during a concussion, uh, and then also remove inflammation. And so <clears throat> I wanna just kinda of go through a paper from 2017. So it is a slightly older paper, but it has a great picture um, to kinda of discuss all the different areas of damage at the, with the concussion, and then how omega-3s can help. So let's go to the paper. Uh, here, it's a review. Uh, it's called Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplementation as a Potential Therapeutic Aid for Recovery from Mild Traumatic Brain Injury, or a concussion. <clears throat> uh, in the abstract, it talks here about how there are no effective therapies for injuries currently available for mild traumatic brain injuries. <clears throat> but omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, or docosahexaenoic acid, have important structural and functional roles in the brain uh, and have been shown to benefit the brain in development and cognitive function throughout life. The Consistent with these critical roles, DHA in the brain has accumulated evidence that DHA may act as a recovery aid or a prophylactic treatment for TBI. Um, and dietary consumption of DHA provided either before or after TBI improves functional outcomes such as spatial learning and memory. These are mostly in animal studies. <clears throat> and then DHA also influences other pathological molecular cascades that happen with traumatic brain injury. So how exactly is this happening? <clears throat> um, we know that concussions are kind of a hidden silent pandemic and that there are many possible symptoms. Symptoms generally resolve within seven to 10 days, but some last up to four weeks, and some may last even longer with post-concussion syndrome. And so we need to figure out how can we improve um, concussion outcomes. And so right here is this beautiful picture. We'll start right up at the top. So with a concussive injury to the to the head, and of course it doesn't have to be in football, it could be in any sport like soccer, hockey, uh, baseball, it could be as a motor vehicle accident, it could be a fall um, in the elderly, and we have a couple of things that are gonna happen. With that initial injury, we have the brain that kind of moves around on top of the brain stem, and it's hitting against the bony skull from the inside, and so that's going to cause two things, two major things axonal damage, so basically damage to the axon. We have um, a neuron cell body, which is the electrical cell in the, in the brain. <clears throat> and the neuron gives an axon, which then has synapses to connect to other neurons. It's how they communicate. And so axonal uh, damage is going to happen because these little yellow cells are called oligodendrocytes and specifically, so specifically in the brain, and they have these myelin sheets, this fatty insulation around the axons. And when we get hit, the, there's damage to this myelin, so now there's a little poor connectivity between cells. Sometimes the axon itself is damaged, but that's relatively rare. Now there are, there are um, cells in the brain that are unmyelinated, Basically, they don't have myelin sheath wrapping and covering and insulating it. And so therefore, those are more likely to be damaged if an axon would become damaged. Then you have inflammation. So inflammation occurs. You have these microglia cells. Microglia cells are the immune cells of the brain. And they become activated. And when they become activated, they're going to increase more inflammation. Okay. Another thing that happens here is we have membrane disruption and excitotoxicity. So besides the axonal damage that might occur directly from the injury, you also have the membrane of the cell gets disrupted. When the membrane of the cell gets disrupted, it leads to these ions like calcium, um, sorry, calcium right here, 
going into the cell when it shouldn't necessarily be high inside the cell. And then potassium goes out of the cell. When that happens, it changes the electrical gradient and it leads to excitotoxicity. It leads to um, more of this glutamate. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that gets released and then it activates other neurons when it shouldn't be, activates other cells. And that leads to excitotoxicity or too much excitation of the brain that can lead to symptoms and damage and other things. And so we know that membrane disruption can lead to axonal damage. Membrane disruption, excitotoxicity can lead to hypermetabolism. Uh, and mitochondrial dysfunction. So let's talk about hypermetabolism first. So hypermetabolism means that more glucose is being used to make ATP initially. However, what happens is we're not getting enough blood flow to the brain. And so the glucose that's just kind of already in the brain or near the brain is being used, but there's not enough oxygen to get more ATP out of it. Therefore, glucose just goes into pyruvate. Pyruvate goes into lactic acid. Lactic acid is something that generally we think builds up in muscles and can cause soreness. That might not necessarily be the case, but lactic acid does happen or does build up when we don't have oxygen to make more ATP from the, from the initial breakdown products of glucose. And so this hypermetabolism leads to more lactic acid. Lactic acid, acid being acidic, right, can cause more inflammation. And more inflammation is not good overall, right? Um, the hypermetabolism can also cause oxidative stress. Um, and then later on, this hypermetabolism becomes hypometabolism because uh, and it says days to months, it's more like within the day, two months, um, because there's decreased blood flow, there's decreased glucose utilization. The brain, the neurons are like, we don't need, we don't want glucose. Um, we can't take it in, even though they need energy to, to help improve or and rebuild. Uh, and this and this leads to an increased susceptibility to repeat injury, which is why like return to play outcomes uh, measures are really important, and those protocols are important. With that membrane disruption and so much calcium coming in, we also get this mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondrial dysfunction are the energy cells or the the powerhouses of the cell. It's what makes our energy, makes our ATP to um, to do cellular functions. And if we're not making good ATP then we're not able to regenerate these gradients. That leads to more oxidative stress. Oxidative stress leads to more inflammation, right? More cellular damage. And all of this, the axonal damage, the inflammation, the cellular damage, um, the oxidative stress can all lead to apoptosis, which is like a programmed cell death where the cell basically decides to die in a way that hopefully can mitigate the amount of inflammation that's occurring. Okay, so how do um, omega-3 fatty acids help? Well, first of all, omega-3 fatty acids, mostly DHA. DHA is 97% of the fatty acids in the brain. Um, and EPA, or eicosapentaenoic acid, is good. Uh, it can turn into DHA, it doesn't do so much, but DHA is the number one most important uh, essential fatty acid, omega-3 fatty acid. And so it makes the membranes more stable because it is going to wrap around the membranes of the myelin sheath um, of those leiodendrocytes to help stabilize axons. Uh, when there's membrane disruption again, we need omega-3 fatty acids to repair or to um, be incorporated into the membrane to then keep it closed so it's no longer disrupted. Um, we also need omega-3 fatty acids to decrease inflammation. So omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, but EPA as well, um, both lead to these pro-resolving mediators. Pro-resolving mediators, or like resolvins, protectins, are going to resolve inflammation. They're going to remove the inflammatory molecules. They're going to they're gonna turn the microglia from a pro-inflammatory state to a more anti-inflammatory state to take away dead and damaged cells and repair the cells that are still working well, are still working well enough to be repaired so that we can have a more functioning brain. Um, with cellular damage, again, here these are these little uh, blue guys with the red tails, these are little phospholipids. And this is where the red tails are where the omega-3 DHA is being incorporated to help stabilize these membranes. 
Um, additionally, omega-3 fatty acids, DHA especially, um, can help with this hypermetabolism, hypometabolism. One benefit of eating more fat is that maybe we can get into a state of ketosis. Ketosis is where we can use ketone bodies for energy and fuel versus glucose. Because if so much glucose is being used and converted into lactic acid, that leads to more inflammation. Versus if we, and then later, we don't even have good glucose. We don't have good glucose utilization. So using ketone bodies for energy can help improve the efficiency of the brain, therefore help with healing. And lastly, omega-3 fatty acids by decreased inflammation also decreases oxidative stress. It's almost like um, by, by decreased inflammation, decreased oxidative stress, but it could also help remove, anti, remove oxidants as an antioxidant capacity, um, which is another great benefit. So um, I know that was kind of a lot of like little biochemistry and biology when it comes to the brain and concussion, but I hope it gives a good, simple representation of why omega-3 fatty acids are so important following a concussion. I didn't go through the other parts of the study showing all the preclinical trials on animal studies that show either before or after or both um, with omega-3 fatty acids given to rats and mice can improve clinical outcomes when it comes to spatial memory, learning, cognitive, and therefore just decrease symptoms. And there are a lot of anecdotal evidence, case reports, and there are also some clinical trials in other papers or other articles that show that omega-3 fatty acids can be beneficial for uh, concussion recovery if we're taking it either before the concussion happens, for those, of the, those people that are already at risk, or after a concussion, if we're quick enough to actually get them into the body. And generally a high dose can be recommended. Um, higher dose than you would get from one or two capsules of a typical fish oil. And it's important that we get a high quality fish oil, ideally a liquid fish oil for better absorption, for lack of rancidity. Um, and so we're actually doing and giving our brain exactly what it needs in a high quality form. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love to uh, hear them and answer them. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them below. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.